Hey there everybody, my name is Aubrey and I have metastatic papillary thyroid carcinoma, which was diagnosed back in November of 2021. I ended up having a total thyroidectomy or the removal of the entire organ, along with the removal of two parathyroids and a series of lymph nodes back in May 2022, making it officially one year since I've had the procedure done. Um, so I'm really excited because I do get a lot of people who are just curious about how I am and what I've been up to since the surgery, um, whether it was because they're facing this same diagnosis or because they simply were invested in my story. So to all of you people who were curious, um, hello and thank you, I'm doing great. If you are facing this disease, I highly recommend you checking out all the other fabulous creators, both on this app and on TikTok and Instagram, um, and checking out some of the resources that I've linked below that have helped me a lot throughout this process. Um, and hopefully you'll be able to feel really solid and confident when you're going through all of this. So without further ado, let's do this year in review. Number one, how does my scar look? Well, I'll show you. <laughs> so I have it running across. It honestly looks really good. When I flex, you can see it a little bit more. There's a little bit of pulling. Um, and I do have some like little strictures I think in the tissue um, so I do feel it every once in a while also for people who live in a sunny environment like I do make sure you're covering it with SPF <laughs> um, right now it's a little darker than usual because I was out in the Sun for a little while this week so there's actually plenty of times where this is like super light and you can barely see it um, I've gotten full range of motion of my neck I think back I do find myself getting sore on this side more so though than I ever have in the past so it could be related or I just could have really bad sleeping habits it's very tough to tell another thing that kind of surprised me was something called terra firmiforma dermatosis which is like a darkening of the skin but it's in like these little patches it kind of looks like dirt um, and no matter what I did in the shower, it just wasn't coming off. And so I ended up kind of doing a little bit of research on it and I asked my doctor and I was diagnosed with this. It's very benign. There's nothing wrong with it from what I understand. And the only thing I had to do was take a little cotton pad with some rubbing alcohol and wipe it and it came off immediately. So if you happen to notice that you've got like some little dirty looking spots on your neck, it could just be that and the, the little alcohol wipe fixed it. And if you ever have any questions about that, definitely reach out to your doctor. Sometimes things can be like totally benign, but seem scary at first. So don't be afraid to ask questions. The other thing that's wild um, is growing up, I used to have really deep lines in my neck and you can still kind of see them. I've always had them. And funny enough, since I've had the surgery, they've like really gone down and I don't even think about them anymore. So I guess that it might have been related to the chronic inflammation I had in my neck at the time because I have dealt with a lot of lymphadenopathy in my neck. Um, so I think that was probably it. So when I got the surgery, uh, as soon as the swelling from the surgery went down, I was amazed to see how much less swelling there is in my neck. Um, and the feeling of openness in my neck is so wild. So I didn't even realize that I was having so much inflammation beforehand because I think it's just been so insidious and like low level for such a long time. Um, so you might actually feel a lot better. I know I do um, in that respect. So all in all, I think that post-surgery aesthetics are fine, totally okay. I don't even think about how I look here at all. Um, I think some people are very concerned about the scar. I actually don't really mind it at all, mostly because like I have cancer. I, I'm not bothered by my scars at all. I'm, I'm actually kind of proud of them because they really do represent um, a really intense moment of my life. So if you're worried about having a scar or how it's gonna look, um, give it some time first. I, I promise you'll have a relationship with your scar. I don't know what it will be. It could be something negative, it could be something positive, but you're gonna have a relationship with your scar based on what you went through. Now onto my voice, which I get asked about all the time because I am an opera singer. My voice is way better than it ever was. Oh my gosh, the freedom. And I think this goes back to the whole concept of the inflammation that I mentioned earlier. Voice is super free. I have so much better control of the instrument and it just feels really good. That being said, I have come across a lot of people in different like FICA groups that have talked a lot about vocal paralysis, vocal injury. So I got very lucky, but I actively sought out a surgeon 
that understood what my career was and um, he seemed very focused on providing me with the best outcomes possible. If you are very worried about your speaking and singing voice, I would highly recommend you doing some research on who's in your area that would be a better fit for working with you and making sure that the vocal cords and the nerves surrounding them are intact and preserved throughout the surgery. And so the next question I always get is about medication and like management after surgery with no thyroid. That's my least favorite part, hands down. And it's got nothing to do really with the medication itself, um, but just like the logistics of being a patient in the American health system, which is what I am right now. Um, it's really hard and I probably will make a whole video about my relationship to insurance and um, my specialists because that itself is a whole saga in of its own. Fundamentally, I go in for blood tests pretty often. I do have other conditions too that I'm managing other than just the thyroid cancer. So I feel like I'm constantly getting poked and prodded actually today. <laughs> I went in and I got six files of blood removed for various tests. Um, it does not hurt depending on the person who's doing the poking. It can be really frustrating with managing my job and personal life with constantly feeling like I'm going to the doctor. I usually see my doctor pretty regularly. Again, is it always because of thyroid cancer? No, so it might not be what your experience is, but for me, I do tend to see a doctor once every week or once every two weeks. But again, not really necessarily related to thyroid cancer. So depending on your experience and depending on what your comorbidities are, um, you might see an uptick in the times that you see a phlebotomist or uh, your nurses or your doctor. So other random things that have happened to me, and I'm not sure if other people have them too. So if you happen to have these symptoms, please let me know because I'm like not finding a lot of information about it. Um, number one, my skin has gotten oilier than it ever has before. I've never had acne in my entire life. I don't usually even really get zits. Um, but every once in a while, randomly, I will get like a wild amount of oil on my skin. So much so that I like feel it. Um, it's very strange and it, it like feels oily to the touch. So I do find myself trying different skincare routines that I've never really tried before in the past. Whether this is thyroid or aging, I don't know, but I do feel like it was a sudden shift and immediately after I got my thyroid removed, my skin changed. So it kind of goes from like super, super dry and flaky to like quite a lot of zits. And then there's like a couple days in between where my skin feels great. Like right now I actually feel pretty good, but last week it was super oily and I had a lot of acne right here. In particular, it's like my chin. That's like the worst. And then occasionally here, I've read somewhere that it's like hormonal, which would make sense if I don't have a thyroid anymore. So I don't know, let me know what your relationship to your skin is after you've had your thyroid removed, because I'm very curious. I used to have a lot of heart palpitations as well. I did get a test um, done, which was a 48 hour monitor test, which is where they put the little um, electrodes on your chest and you live with it for 48 hours. And then you give them the device and they look at everything. And then they see if anything happens during that period of time. They were probably related to um, my thyroid medication being adjusted, but everything was benign and I mostly just ignore them. I'll like note them in the back of my mind, but I just kind of ignore them. And when I'm on a good dose, I don't really have any at all. Um, but when I'm on a bad dose, it can happen two to three times a day. And it's super unnerving, to be honest. If you ever need to vent about your experiences, um, I highly recommend you joining some of these groups that I found on like Facebook that are just full of other people who are going through the same process. These groups have mattered so much to me during my own recovery. And I think that uh, if anybody feels lonely, they, they can really provide a lot of support. Overarchingly, I think this year has gone as well as it possibly can. And I think I'm very happy with the turnout. I'm very content and I'm feeling positive. And I hope that you do as well, should you be facing this diagnosis or a loved one of yours is facing this diagnosis. Um, it can be really tricky and it's going to be a lifelong thing that I manage. And if you ever have any questions, make sure that you talk to your doctor, right? And I always tell people like prevention is the best medicine. So if you ever have any concerns, make sure to bring it up, bring it up to your family members just for their opinions. Make sure you feel like you can go to your doctor and ask questions as it needs to happen because otherwise, you know, you might miss out on an opportunity to get ahead of stuff and you always want to be ahead of stuff. And uh, that kind of wraps up my yearly update. Uh, but if you guys want to 
hear anything specific, feel free to send me a message or write a comment below. And I look forward to seeing you again soon. Personally, I liked being able to see people do updates well after the surgery because it does give you a better understanding of like what it's like to live like five years out, blah, blah, blah. So I will continue making these updates as I hit those milestones just so that you guys also can understand what's going on. Um, but yeah, I enjoy being able to tell you guys good news. Um, because that's what this all is, is, is very good news. So all in all, I wish you guys the best and hope you have a great rest of your day.